As wars continue to rage abroad and Iranian proxies target American forces in the Middle East, this could spell trouble for our military forces right here in America. As senior leaders warn that 2024 will see major structural changes for the Army, and recent reports say major cuts could even come for the branch's elite special forces. Which, which units could be headed for the chopping block? That's the question we asked this morning. Jim Hansen is the chief editor for the Middle East Forum and served in the U.S. Army Special Forces. He joins us now with his analysis. So, Jim, the Army is about to have its lowest number since 1940. Here's the, here's the graphic. It'll be a 452,000 uh, soldier active force by the end of fiscal year 23. Is this the number the Army wanted, or is this because they can't recruit? How did we get to this low number? We got there because they can't find people who are capable of serving and want to serve. You know, Pete, when you and I joined the military, we proudly raised our hands to support and defend the Constitution because we knew that America was the greatest and freest country in the history of the planet. The children growing up the past several generations have been taught that America is a racist, white supremacist, misogynist, transphobic place, nothing to be proud of. Why would you want to go ahead and potentially risk your life for something like that? They're used to being told the world owes you something. Show up, get your participation trophy, and you know the world will take care of you. That's just not how it is, and this is a result of, of that generation and the, the one following it not being ready to become part of our military service. And, you know, the types of units they're cutting, Jim, uh, it raises eyebrows. The Army Secretary, Christine Wormuth, I'm sure she's a, a warfighter, says the reduction will come from close combat forces uh, some, and special operations as well. Is, is that where we should be cutting from? Well, Pete, as I'm sure you're well aware, you know, the, the people in the rear with the gear are the ones killing most of the enemy. And I don't <laughs> want to dog support troops. You know, I, we play that game inside the military, but you have to have the people at the of pointy course. end of the spear or you're not going to be something that first is a deterrent and second, if called upon, can actually take the fight to the enemy. And they're looking at it now and saying, well, we can't get people willing to do that, or we don't want to, which is even scarier. And, and now they're just saying, we'll just find whoever we can, and we'll put them in a room with a computer, you know, and they'll save the free world. That's just not how it works. And Jim, I know you're in touch with a lot of guys still serving. I am as well. What's your sense of the, of the morale, of the ethos of today's army under the Biden administration? It's sad. I, I think the one thing you could say is the people who are still willing to serve, who have that warrior spirit, are demoralized because they spend more time practicing their pronouns and, and doing pride parades than they do fighting and, and practicing for war. So I, I think we have to change the mentality, first of the country that says the military and the United States are worthy things, and then second, change the mentality inside the military that you have to focus on war fighting, not on wokeness. And Jim, you know this, this recruitment number that we're not making comes while standards are being lowered, too, across the board. So we're lowering standards to get people in, and we still can't recruit enough to fill the ranks. Uh, it does not bode well. Go ahead. Last word. No, you, you have to be able to uphold the standards. You can't lower them and say, well, maybe this will still be OK. Uh, that, again, is not conducive to having the fighting force we need in a world that's on fire. Had a, had a senior leader recently say, we're not changing the standards, we're just adapting them. Okay. Right. Sounds Down. Right. Yeah, exactly. Jim, thank you very much. Happy New Year. Good to be with you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.